Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be talking about how to analyze the relationship between inputs and outputs in our model using Monte Carlo simulation in the context of an existing Excel model. This is part of our lecture segment on Monte Carlo simulation. So we left off last time, uh, we were working on this uh, example of how to run Monte Carlo simulation on an existing Excel model. And we went ahead and got it to where we were able to run the simulations and output the results of those simulations into Excel and um, be able to get the probability of a particular objective, a histogram of the uh, distribution and a table of the percentiles of the distribution. Uh, so definitely watch that prior video before coming to this one. What we're doing in this video is we're going to modify the simulation a little bit so that it keeps the uh, interest rate associated with the uh, years to retirement. And that will allow us to then um, analyze the relationship between the interest rate and the years to retirement. So I'm going to come over to here um, and we already have this function, which is getting us the random interest rate, putting it into the model, getting the result from the Excel model, which has recalculated that point and saving it. Um, so what we need to do is um, now we're going to save not just the years to retirement, but also the um, interest rate as well. So I'm going to rename this list to all data so it's more indicative of what we're doing. Um, and then here I'm going to append not just the year's retirement, but also the interest rate. Um, and let me just quickly grab that logic. Um, that uh, we now have those results in a list here. And then what we can do is we can create a data frame from those results. So data frame uh, and then the columns are going to be interest and use for retirement. And then we have that data frame. Um, and then instead of, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over one, um, instead of writing using the column and uh, you know list within list approach, we can actually just write the data frame back into Excel. Um, so then we're going to do uh, the same assignment, um, but we're going to assign the data frame instead. So But I know if I do this right now, it's going to bring the index over, and so it'll be three columns, and it's going to overwrite what we have here. Um, so I'm going to also put options, data frame, uh, index equals false. Um, and then we should get it coming in. It will have the headers, um, but that's, that's fine. So let's give that a try. Um, and now we do see coming over here what we expected to see. Of course, we only have it at ten iterations right now instead of the full, um, to, instead of the full thousand. So now we can see that works. So let's bring that back into our function uh, rather than what we had before um, of doing the list within list approach. So. Uh, bring all that into here, and then we can return the data frame instead. Um, and now we should be able to run this thousand simulations, 10% mean, 5% interest or standard deviation. And we want to see uh, the first few results out of that. So let's give that a try. It's going to take a little bit to run through the model. Uh, 
And oh, I didn't uh, redefine this. That would <laughs> cause it to not actually change. Um, oh, I've accidentally got this still in here. <laughs> Definitely don't want that. Uh, that was the old code. So now let's redefine this. Okay, now let's try this again. Um, so again, it's going to take a little bit to run, uh, but now we do see all the interest rates associated with the year's retirement coming in. And now we can modify this because now the year's retirement have moved. Um, and so we can get back to our probability of achieving the objective. Um, and so now, and then this also, we want to move over. Um, and same thing with the percentile, because we did have to move um, that column. So just uh, carrying those results all over. Great. So we have everything we need in Excel. Now let's go to do the analysis of how the inputs relate to the outputs. So the first thing that you want to do is a scatter plot. So we can just highlight all of these data uh, back up to the top uh, and we want to insert and we can see that the scatter plot comes up as the first recommended chart there so let's add that um, and we can definitely see a very clear relationship here between the years retirement and the um, interest rate it also highlights that we have some issues here. We are getting some negative interest rates. And so we would probably want to deal with that in the model as well. Um, let's come over to Python to quickly fix that. Um, so what we can do is instead of random dot normal variate, we can um, call that, but um, we're going to do, while the value is less than zero, we're going to keep drawing more values um, and initialize the value at a negative number. Um, and we can call this random normal positive. You can see I explained this in more detail in the adding uh, Monte Carlo simulation to a Python model in that video. Uh, same, built the same function over there. Um, and then that can take the mean and the standard deviation. Um, and then finally return the value. So then we can use that instead of random normal variate. Uh, redefine that. Let's go ahead and try this again. And then after this finishes, we'll see the numbers update. Yep. And now we see that we don't have those negative numbers in the distribution. So uh, doing plots of your output is a great way to check and understand everything that's going on in your simulations. So now we can see there's a clear relationship just from the scatter plot as the interest rate goes up, user retirement goes down, and it's a nonlinear. Um, it's, it's a steeper decrease at first, and then it flattens out as you get to higher interest rates but we can um, quantify this relationship using the regression. So regression Excel is gonna live on the data tab and then um, it would be over here. Uh, you can notice that I have nothing over here right now and that's because I need to enable the add-in for the data analysis tool pack for that to show up. So you might already have data analysis showing up over here, but if you don't, it is built into Excel, you just have to enable it. So in order to do that, you do File, and then Options, and then Add-ins, um, and then you want to manage Excel Add-ins, and then, um, that's weird, it does say that I have it enabled. Uh, let me try disabling it and then re-enabling it to see if that will allow it to come up. Um, hopefully this will come up. Um, okay, good, good. So now we have the data analysis section showing up over here. 
And so we can go to do our regression. So just click data analysis. It brings up a lot of options. The one we want to use here is regression. And then it's going to ask for your Y's and your X's. So the Y is always going to be uh, whatever your output is here, used to retirement. And the X, you can add multiple X variables, and you should if you're changing multiple things in your simulation. Here we just have one variable, so I'm going to add that. Um, and you'll notice with both of these that I picked up the label as well, and so I'm going to check that they have labels, and that will allow that to come through into the regression results as well. Um, and I'm going to output that analysis um, right here. You can also put it on a new sheet if you'd like, um, and then hit OK to run it. Um, and then we see the regression output coming up here. Um, so then we um, get the result here of a negative 95.8 coefficient with a very low p-value, so it definitely is significantly related. And negative 95.8, that's saying a one unit increase in the interest rate decreases years to retirement by 95.8 years. Now you might say, whoa, that's huge. Why is that so huge? That's because a one unit increase here is going from zero to 100% interest. So that's obviously, uh, much larger than a realistic interest rate change. Uh, so to get it to a 1% increase in interest rate, which is a more reasonable thing to talk about, we just divide by 100. Um, and so that would be a 1% increase in interest rate decreases years to retirement by almost a year. Um, so that um, we can use that to interpret it. Um, and then uh, you know, if you had other inputs, they would just show up as additional lines here, and you could interpret those coefficients in a similar fashion. Um, and then the one other part of the analysis is when you do have multiple inputs, you can't just directly compare the coefficients to determine which is the most impactful. You have to compare the standardized coefficients. And to get the standardized coefficients, um, so you would do this for each one of your, um, you don't care about the intercept. Uh, you would do this for each one of uh, your inputs. You would go and you would calculate the standard deviation uh, of that input. And then um, the standardized coefficient, so this would be standard deviation and then standard coefficients. Um, so again, interest, it's just going to be standard deviation multiplied by the coefficient. So that's now saying that a one standard deviation increase in the interest rate leads to, uh, is associated with a decrease in years to retirement of almost four and a half years and a one standard deviation increase in interest rate is close to 5%. Um, and then when you have other coefficients here, you can just pick the largest in absolute value, and those are gonna be the ones which are the most impactful inputs in your model. So that shows how we can do this analysis of the relationship between the inputs and outputs in Excel. Um, and then to wrap up all this material on Monte Carlo simulation, uh, there's also a lab exercise here on doing this process for your project one model in Excel. Um, so it's going to be very similar to the uh, Python uh, project one extension exercise that was mentioned in the prior video on extending the dynamic salary retirement model in Python. Um, you're just gonna go through this process of adding uh, Monte Carlo simulation to your Excel model. Um, so here in the level one, you're gonna be varying the number of phones um, and then analyze the results, table of probabilities, um, chance of reaching 800 million MPV, et cetera. And the level two, then you're gonna do the same, keep, keep that varying as it was, but also vary the lifespan 
of the machines. Um, and then in addition to the visualization we just talked about, then you want to go through this analysis of what's the relationship uh, between the inputs and the outputs. So that wraps up this segment on Monte Carlo simulation. So thanks for listening and see you next time.